Hello, and welcome to Storm Drum 2 by East West. I'm David Earle, and I'll be your host as we explore this essential library of drums, big and small. This is a library of sounds and performances that makes any production you're working on sound really huge and cinematic. Storm Drum 2 is the brainchild of Nick Phoenix. Nick's been creating iconic music for film trailers and television commercials since 1994, and he's scored or licensed music for well over 1,000 ad campaigns. He's also worked in television and film. And during his time as a composer, Nick wanted to create his own set of iconic libraries, which actually gave birth to his collaboration with Doug Rogers and the Quantum Leap series by East West. Storm Drum 2 is a collection of percussion instruments and sound design elements that were recorded and performed in the highest caliber studio with the highest caliber mics using the highest caliber talent. This library has become omnipresent in the music, film, TV, and game industry and is a key component of almost everything I produce as well. There is over 12.5 gigabytes of sound to explore in Storm Drum 2 and over 100 MIDI performances to add authenticity to those sounds. So let's explore Storm Drum 2. So first, let's go over to the browser. So here we have Storm Drum 2 patches. We have folders, and inside the folders, we have kits, or we have enclosed folders. So most of the folders are going to go directly to the drum kits, but if we go to best of Storm Drum 1, you'll see that we have large percussion and small percussion. There are a couple of other folders that are kind of curious as well. So Best of Storm Drum 1 is going to be a collection of the best drums from Storm Drum that was, came before Storm Drum 2. And then we have, down below, we have Zen Drum programs. So these are going to be Storm Drum 2 kits that have been specially mapped out for the Zen Drum MIDI controller. So Drum Kit and Related, Ethnic Drums, Ethnic Metals, MIDI performance multis. We're going to talk about this later, but essentially what this is going to do is load a lot of different drums at the same time that can be performed by a MIDI file that's included with the library. Storm Drum 2 Pro new material. This is going to be anything new that's added to the library, and this is kind of neat because they are constantly trying to improve the libraries that you buy from East West, and they'll end up in this folder. And then if you have a Zen Drum controller, these are going to be the libraries for the Zendrum controller. The other folder that's a little strange is going to be sound design percussion because these aren't kits per se, but they have all kinds of sound elements and things like that. Some of them are drums, but a lot of them can be synthesized or super processed and really interesting sounds. But that's it. That's the essentials of how you get through the library. It's very simple to navigate. Now let's check out the player real quick. If I go up to the player, You'll see on the left-hand side, I've got my MIDI port channel transpose velocity settings and voice limit. Below that, I have an amplitude envelope. So this can be really good if you want to create interesting gated sounds for drums. And then on the right-hand side, I have a filter, stereo spread, which is a stereo effect, delay, reverb. And the reverb's really great. It has the, uh, you know, hundreds of impulse responses that you can choose from. It's a convolution reverb, which means that they actually went out and recorded real spaces and included them in this reverb, so kind of awesome. Play 5 now has a mixer, so if we click on the mixer, you'll note that this ticky ticky patch is going through this channel strip, and if I click effects, the SSL channel strip and effects are all going to be here. This is all included in all of the libraries now, which is pretty amazing. So we have our reverb, we have a bus compressor, and we have an SSL channel strip, which is pretty rad. All right, so let's go back to the player. These sounds are very well scripted and programmed. And to give you an example of kind of what to expect from Storm Drum 2, I have a little logic session over here and I wanted to play a couple of the sounds. So one of the sounds that we talked about earlier, we were talking about the Storm Drum 1 sounds, and they're still very serviceable. Here's a Tycho set that came directly from there. Still very, very good and very, very usable. And remember when I was talking about the amplitude envelope? Listen what happens when I pull the release back. Pretty 
Pretty cool, right? If I go into the mixer and go to my effects, I can turn on the input to my SSL channel strip. Add a little compression. So it's pretty great. Even though it's the Storm Drum 1 sound, we have all of the flexibility of the SSL effects to take care of it. Below that, I have another Storm Drum 1 sound that I think sounds really neat. Now sometimes the reverb is coming from the ambience of the instrument itself. So if I pull this release back, you'll hear me messing with that ambience. So in a lot of the Storm Drum 1 patches, they actually had the uh, reverb recorded in with the patch, and I can mess with that. Then we have an Iraqi talking drum. I just thought this was a neat sort of example of what comes from Storm Drum. Very well recorded, and they cut through mixes really, really well. When I get down to the drum kit, this actually comes from Ministry of Rock. So it's very playable. Yeah, I have a little line here. Now this isn't what it sounds like when you first load it up. Again, I went into the mixer and I've messed around with it. I have an SSL channel strip going on, I got a new reverb. If I take that reverb off, and originally it had like a larger, darker reverb, but I was able to go in and kind of mess around with it, which is very, very cool. Highly recommend going in on any of these patches and shaping them because they were recorded very, very well, but you kind of have the raw sound and you need to mess with it a little bit. Inside of the drum kit folder that you have here, you have different toms that you can line up with different kits. They're laid out in a general MIDI configuration, so you can use them with just about anything, but check it out. So that's Octoplus, which is really awesome, extended toms. And then we have ones that are played with rods instead of sticks. You can hear a lot of the variation in the velocity as we go through them. Now the Ludwig toms, this is going to be three toms, high, mid, and low tom. Again, we can look to see whether the effect is being caused by a reverb or if the effect is actually burned into the drum, which it appears to be. You can do some real fun stuff with this. Check it out. So that's just messing with the amp envelope. It's a lot of fun. Now the beast. One thing is really neat about the way East West has done some of these percussion libraries is they got some special instruments from Remo and this is one of them. This is the largest tom ever made. It's called the beast and it's enormous. And you can see that the MIDI file, I've spread it out between these different octave ranges to get different panning and different tunings on the drum, which is great. Whenever you see SR on a Storm Drum 2 library, that means short release. So that way they don't have the big long tail on them. When we start getting into ethnic drums, I really love some of these sounds. I wanted to highlight some of the ones that I like the best. You may think differently because they're all very, very good. They're all very well recorded. I just love using these. So here's brushed drums. You can really hear the natural resonance in all those drums and the way they were recorded. It's pretty neat. Here's a darbuka with metals. These sounds are really inspiring and they make you want to play things correctly. <laughs> Here's Malaysian djembe. Pretty cool. 
When we get into the larger drums, we've got things like very large taiko drums, or and this one's an odaiko, which is just an enormous drum. You can hear that you can also hit the side of the drum, which gives you a different tone. Pretty awesome. Roman war drums. Good for tension in an action scene or your military scene, stuff in the background. Here's an udu, which is a clay pot drum that has a, a hole on it that you can cover with your hand, and it gives it an interesting whoop sound. Another thing I particularly love about the Storm Room 2 library are all of its metal sounds. They're absolutely shimmering and, and beautiful. There's some bowls and then bowed bowls as well. We also have some fun stuff like this is action melody, so it's like a low piano thing. Just to show the range of this, it's not just drums. There are some things in here that are rather melodic. Here's a break drum. Use that on a lot of stuff. Finger cymbals. Every articulation you could possibly get out of a finger cymbal in this instrument. This is a very popular instrument right now called the hong drum, which is basically like a steel drum but instead of playing inside of the steel drum, it's like this, it looks like a UFO and you tap it with your fingers. There are different areas on the drum that you can hit as well. And it's just, it's very, very beautiful. And then for special effects, if you're doing a horror movie, you might want a water phone. Very, very cool. Freaky sounds. Uh, the water phone actually has some little spikes that are sticking out of a water bowl that you can bow or you can tap. Here's some Tibetan bells. In the additional content, we have this thing called the Lion's Drum Ensemble. Pretty cool. And then some Persian battle drums. Now, I did say that they have sound effects in this library as well. This in particular is a bunch of glitched sounds at 135 BPM. And then we have another one at 150. And then some pure sound effects, neural exposure. very beautifully designed and work really well in a cinematic context. Under these hits, the sound design and percussion hits as well. We have Godzilla hits, which are great for film trailers. You know, it's very, very good, deep, huge cinematic sound. So there's just kind of a brief you know, run through of a lot of sounds that I like. But one of the most important things that I wanted to show you was how to load up the MIDI performances. So check it out. I'm going to unhide some tracks that I have here. What this is, is a single instance of play, but I have 16 MIDI channels that are accessing that one play instance. When I go back over to play, you can see that I have a MIDI performance multifolder. See this right here where it says a slight glitch. I'll load that up. And what you note that's different from all of the other patches that I've had up here so far is that there's a ton of instruments loaded into play now, and they're all on different channels. Now I'm going to bring up my Finder window, and if I pull my Finder window in, you'll see that I have these MIDI files. The MIDI files have the same name. I'm going to grab the MIDI file, and I'll drag it into the first track of this multi. I'll import the tempo information, and then I'll use whatever uh, frame rate it's got. And now what it's going to do is it's going to play 16 different instruments. And the performance is going to basically highlight 
what all of these instruments can do. We've got darbuka, we've got Malaysian djembe, we've got octopus toms. These are all the things that we've been talking about today. But now they're in the context of being played by real players in a real context. So here we go. So there you go. That was one MIDI file that was included amongst the hundred that you get with Storm Drum 2. Now this is an entire song, but others just have general grooves that you can pick and choose from and make your own arrangement of performances that work really well with the drums that they're assigned to. So there you have it, Storm Drum 2. It has been a piece of my arsenal for a long time, and I think it's just still absolutely wonderful and has a lot to offer for anybody who's doing cinematic music. So until our next cartoon, I'll see you next time. Ciao.